So this is a work in progress. Uh, so we don't have clear answers about the ideas of the future university. Uh, and we also apologize that we're not going to reference all the ideas that are going to be contained because of uh, time constraints. So uh, Igor and I have been involved in research uh, on um, social movements, and this was a starting point uh, for this paper. So we were looking at some student protests in the last 10 years uh, in the UK, in France, Chile, Central Europe, throughout the Balkans and elsewhere in the world, and looking at the grievances that students were having. And an overriding leitmotif of all of this uh, were uh, the market uh, forces uh, or the market pressures that, uh, uh, that the uni that higher education was experiencing. So the current education in general and university education in particular are facing increasing pressures from many fields. Besides the factors of rising impact of technology and advance of globalization, it seems like the neoliberal paradigm could turn out to be the most detrimental one. In this sense, as the university simply turns into another market to be exploited by private companies and financial markets, it is consequently transformed into a simple corporate company whose only aim is to turn profits. By placing learning itself into the dominant economistic idiom, notions of efficiency, productivity, or consumerism overtake the university space, instrumentalizing knowledge and remaking universities through the Walmart model. That is, by considering students only as cheap supply of labor and valuing education solely to the extent that it produces necessary workforce that can compete in the global economy. In this sense, Education represents a new market to burst, making university rectors increasingly focus on status and ranking, keeping a nervous eye on league tables just like football managers do. Also, as increased revenues represent the road to take, money, management, and marketing turn more significant than knowledge and critical thinking itself. Thus, university structured, being systematically replaced by a system in which their production or output, as the new jargon has it, is literally measured and counted, resembles more like a bottle factory in which academic publications or total number of students turned into unit of production, the output, rather than uh, creating a, a culture of a critical thinking. Likewise, as university becomes yet another market to be commodified, students become clients who, instead of pursuing knowledge, simply purchase diplomas or, more importantly, college experience that mostly increases their utility for the market. By emphasizing form over content, universities begin to focus on marketing those experiences that customers essentially demand, thus diverting huge amounts of money toward the goal of increasing student satisfaction, Consequently, converting university into places you usually see in Coca-Cola commercials where you taste the feeling. The business model of education, with its current demand for accountability, promotes a form of political, intellectual, and social illiteracy. As such, it instills a tradition not of exchanging ideas, but of dictating them. Not of debate or discussing, but of lifeless, unquestioning credulity marked by passive acceptance of teachers' dominant wisdom. In this sense, we believe that we are currently living in a time of widespread social and political unrest, or what would be called as time of epochal trans, uh, transition, to use Paulo Freire's word, or the age of uncertainty, to use Hankish's word, and bearing in mind yesterday's speeches uh, that uh, Jody Jensen and Jim Skelly gave when they talk about uh, Hankish's over and approach to higher education. The problem is that we are currently in the process of canceling the future, as Barardi and Fisher have said, considering import, uh, in, impeding global conflicts and envir environmental challenges. When we look at the leaders, um, it's not the problem that the leaders, and by leaders, I, I don't mean only political leaders, but also those making decisions and the biggest companies in the world. When you look at them, it's not that they have not been capable or educated enough, but they have been too capable and too educated in, a process, in the system that I just described. In this sense, they have been very effective at uh, making the right economic decisions. However, they have not taken uh, into account many of the contingencies and side effects of their decisions. Therefore, rather than seeking a university of the future, we seek a university to act as a tool to uncancel the future. And now, 
you got to will continue with their ideas how this university should okay, look. Okay, so I'm quickly just going to mention five points because of the lack of the time and just going to connect to what I heard yesterday in a very interesting panel that we had about Hanksha's work. So, uh, for example, we talked about Fukuyama and end of history. So this is also uh, for us uh, an arbitrary and ideological uh, point because it uh, implies inertness. It implies that the world is finished and that we don't have anything to do. We just, just should act how to, to act inside of this global economy to survive. However, Bauman has a very interesting idea which says that society never reaches the limits of justice and Giraud says how uh, the notion uh, of unfinished human business is very important and should always be uh, carried in mind. So, for example, Lynch, Lynch notices how in the current system uh, all-knowing seems to be downloading. Uh, and as thus, uh, it see, as, as Postman notices, most students currently suffer more from an inability to generate ideas than from any other uh, disease. I've studied economics uh, for a while and I know how this uh, actually functions. So, um, uh, what we want to imply is what actually Jim Books seems to promote yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, quite in a good uh, way, is that education should relativize and unsettle what seems to be normal and obvious and known. So, uh, as Colini noticed, uh, it should call into question that uh, the information that training and university education should not, should not be training, uh, simply transmits. Uh, so it problematizes the world order. So as Jody notices yesterday with this really nice picture of women opening these walls that we seem to be encircled in, we should try to open these walls and interpret the world and not accept it as uh, the final point uh, or just a given. So uh, we, in this way, we could uh, not be any more enclosed in, and we should move from instruction, which is a, this, uh, uh, a technique of discipline, towards the discovery and fo uh, foster openness and not closure of wine. And this way, it would be an antithesis to technocrats' problem-solving stance. So uh, here, in, uh, I ask, I think what we see and what I really cherish is that we promote some kind of uh, community of discourse. So uh, it is based on dialogue, and dialogue is very important at the current times, as picture, another picture we saw yesterday, it's also from Hankish, a man standing between, between two big rocks on, the, on a very small rock, right? So as, as uh, Bauman noticed in the times that are marked by disorder and uncertainty, we cannot find any easy solutions. That's why dialogue is going to be very important. As Freire notes, uh, and this is connected to professors, only dialogue truly communicates because education should not be a skill of persuasion. Um, because dialogue does not, uh, uh, anti-dialogue does not communicate, it only issues com communiques. And this is what I got a lot from my education as an economist. So uh, we should all participate in great conversation and uh, note uh, what Josas talked about, that we should uh, tend to avoid uh, having some kind of hierarchies of more important and less important disciplines. This is especially important for the notion of humanities. Uh, because in this, uh, in this way, we should focus on research and turn into uh, uh, subjects and not objects of research, like Freire implies, and we should focus on critical consciousness, another term of Freire, uh, because we should emphasize, as we do here, and I ask uh, the research embedded in the curriculum itself, where people should think from their existential positions and try to resolve uh, problems of the world. Regional perspective in this kind of way are very important, as uh, Edward Said noticed, uh, because in educational produ production, which is very, I'm sorry, Jim, for, to use this word, um, it, it, uh, Kusek, of course, and Hungary belongs to periphery. You're not Harvard, you're not Yale, you're not, you're, I don't know what, you're not too famous. So it's a good opportunity at this time of crisis to produce some knowledge and theory that we can interpret ourselves and not wait for others to interpret our own reality. So uh, regional partners, as also I ask, is promoting the inter-university centers. We should focus on cooperation with other universities and not on competition, that we are better than them, but we just want to cooperate in this kind of uh, efforts. So in this way, uh, concerning uh, specialization, uh, we should uh, notice that even if we all specialize to a great extent, that it, this specialization is enemy of inclusiveness. 
because uh, on concentrating on something much smaller than uh, the life itself, we are unable to answer these questions that actually we talked about yesterday. What kind of rationality do we actually face and how to, should we in interpret our word and how we lost some kind of narratives. So only through, let's start from the small point from interdisciplinary uh, studies, we can try to communicate together and answer the questions that are much more important than some kind of small solutions and publications and having your citations and so on. So uh, in this way, um, it's also very important for democracy because as Freire says, democracy wouldn't last without the formative culture that made it possible. And as we can uh, notice, and as uh, note, uh, and uh, as Freire noticed, the problem of Brazilian transition in 1964 during the Brazilian coup was because people were suffering from magical and uh, naive consciousness. And we can actually relate this uh, the way people understand this world right now through uh, I don't know uh, through too much information or through accepting any kind of information uncritically. Uh, so uh, in some way, uh, I would just like to call. I'm almost done. Uh, Arendt uh, says how. Uh, and we can maybe apply to current times uh, that uh, people suffer from curiously quite authentic inability to think. Uh, one that uh, being more than a mere stupidity represents a mode of uh, manufactured thoughtlessness that uh, pointed both to the disappearance of politics and constituted one of the most serious threats facing uh, democracy. And just for the end, because we don't want to imply anything on anyone, university, besides being a question of design, is also a question of uh, accident. So we should imply uh, that uh, there should be some freestyle and thinking even outside of this box. Bravo.